Welcome to Chapter 11, AP Statistics Review. Um, Chapter 11 in Bach, Bellman, DeVoe is about understanding randomness and simulations. And so that's what we're going to cover in today's show. All right. So one of the first things we discussed in Chapter 11 was the idea of randomness that a lot of times what people think is random really isn't like one of the activities we did is you turn the page in your textbook and there were some numbers there and you said hey pick a number at random and we found that most of the people picked the number three because of where it was located on the page and so that wasn't a truly random process so just you know picking numbers by judgment really isn't a random process because of the way our brain works um, an event is random if we know what outcomes could happen, but not which particular values did or will happen. Uh, generating really random numbers is hard. Uh, Random.org is one website that you can go to and do uh, lots of different applications uh, where you can use truly random numbers. Uh, I showed a textbook in class that was a table full of random numbers. There's a random number table in the back of your textbook and uh, those numbers are generated by truly random processes such as radioactive decay, times, and different things like that. Uh, most calculators use pseudo-random numbers, which means they mimic random behavior, but if you knew the algorithm generating them, you would know what particular number would come next. Uh, but they're good enough for our purposes. So how do we generate random numbers or pseudo-random numbers on the calculator? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so uh, under the math menu, <clears throat> we can go to probability, and there are all the different functions. Ooh, it's acting funky. Let's stop that. There we go. Try that again. One more over. There we go. Uh, generating random numbers on the calculators under the probability menu, and we can see that the very first command is rand. Uh, that one is for generating a random decimal between 0 and 1. The only time we ever really use that one is if we go back to the main screen here for a minute. Um, when you get a brand new calculator or you change the button battery on it, so you're resetting the memory, um, the pseudo-random algorithm goes back to step 1 in the process. So you, you know, pick a number like the last four digits of your four number, phone number and then click store which is right above the on key and then go to math probability rand <clears throat> and hit enter and just hit enter again and it'll just say just give you the number back but what it has done is it has moved your calculator to step number 2356 in the pseudo random generator that way if we were doing a class activity involving random numbers we would not all end up with the same numbers if we were all at the same step in our calculator if you have the inspire, um, it's, a, it's a command all its own. I think it's called seeding, S-E-E-D-I-N-G, the uh, random number generator. Okay, so back to probability. <clears throat> the main one that we use in AP Statistics is randint, which generates a random integer. And so we might, let's say, want a number between 1 and 10. So we go 1, comma, 10. Maybe we want two of them, actually. Um, so you could do comma two, and it would give you two numbers at once. Notice here that we got six and six. That's because the random integer generator doesn't know not to do repeats uh, if you don't want it to. Uh, there is, on some of your calculators, if you have the latest OS for the 84, um, down at the very bottom here, the randint no repeat generator. Where did it go? Okay, there it is. <clears throat> Randit, no repeat. And so that one, if you do 1 comma 10, it won't let you do comma 2 because it won't give you just two numbers. It'll give you all 10. And so you might want to store that in a list if you're going to be using them. Notice that it just orders all of the 10 numbers. Um, usually, um, the, one we, the way we used it most frequently would just be to do randint and let's say I'm trying to generate something that's mimicking percents. So then I might do 1 comma 100. <clears throat> and hit enter. And there's 16. You hit enter and it'll do again. 
hit enter, it'll give you another one, hit enter, it'll give you another one, and you can do that you know, all day and get different random numbers between one and a hundred. Okay, so that is how we use our calculator to do that. On the Inspire, you can find that under the probability menu under number. That's where most of the random things are located. And so what do we use this for? Usually we're using this for conducting simulations of random events to generate some data as opposed to doing a sample survey or an experiment. Um, there are seven steps that you need to do uh, for a good simulation. One is to identify the component to be repeated, uh, such as maybe throwing a free throw or taking a driving test. Uh, number two, explain how you use randomly generated digits to model the outcome of a trial. Uh, so for example, um, saying that I'm going to use a random number table and I'm going to use two digits at a time and the digits 00, zero through 39 uh, would represent a successful free throw because the person is a 40% free throw shooter and then any other digits would represent failure. <clears throat> something like that. And then number three, explain how you will simulate one complete trial by generating the random numbers. Uh, so what a trial is depends on what you're trying to simulate. You know, it might be, you know, just a single free throw, so you just draw a single number. Um, it might be um, drawing names from a hat that you're simulating. And so in that case, <coughs> um, the, no the names might be assigned numbers, and then you have to make sure that you draw until you get whatever name you're looking for or all the names assigned to positions and ignoring repeats and all that kind of stuff. Uh, for AP exam purposes, using the quote-unquote drawing from a hat method is uh, a very good idea because if you say you're drawing numbers from a hat, it takes care of a lot of issues like forgetting to say that you're going to ignore repeats, you know, and different things like that. So um, that's a good uh, way to explain how you're going to simulate Although in reality, you know, you're probably going to be using your calculator or a random number table and not really a hat. <clears throat> number four, clearly state what you will be counting. In other words, what is it that we're measuring here? I'm measuring the number of times a person has to shoot a basket until they make a free throw, maybe. Or how many times they have to take a driver's test until they pass. Something like that, whatever it is that you're measuring. And then next we have... Uh, run several trials. If you're doing this for real data, you need to do many trials, maybe with a computer, maybe you can get a thousand or a hundred trials pretty easily with a calculator, maybe you get 30, just depends on your situation, but more is better. And then analyze the outcomes of your several trials, usually this means finding the average, um, and then stating your conclusion. So for example, you might say this person is um, you know, a 70% free throw shooter on average would need to throw five times until they um, <clears throat> make a basket, according to our simulation. Something like that. Make sure it's in context. And uh, if you, you know, have an average that is a decimal, go ahead and report that decimal, you know, so that they don't think you actually got a 7 when the answer was really 6.3. But then you might say, hey, you know, this means you need to buy seven boxes because you can't buy 6.3 boxes of cereal, something like that. <clears throat> okay. So let's look at an example. You are about to take the road test for your driver's license. You hear that only 34% of candidates pass the test the first time, but the percentage rises to 74% on retests. Estimate the average number of test drivers take to get a license using a simulation. Okay, so go to the next slide. Okay, so we need to identify the component to be repeated in multiple trials of generating random numbers. Okay, so what is it that I want to simulate over and over? Uh, taking the driving test, right? I cannot draw very well with this thing. Taking driving test. That's until passed, right? Because I want to know how many it's going to take until they pass. Oh, cursive goes a little better. All right, so that might be what we're doing there. And then the next thing that we would need to do
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is explain how we will use randomly generated digits to model the outcome of a trial. So for that, I might say something like, um, I will use a um, random number table, and I will assign the digits 01 through 34 to represent passing on the first trial. If passed, then stop. Um, if failed, then draw a second two digit number. <coughs> um, with 0, 01 through, what was it, 74? What did that other slide say? Let's say it said 70, 74. I think it said 75, 74, so I need to go 74, um, representing pass. Repeat, if necessary, until test is passed count number of tests taken in this trial. Okay, number three, explain how you will simulate one complete trial by generating the random numbers. I think I just did that. Yes, okay, so I kind of did two and three together there. I said explain how you use randomly generated digits, that was this part right here, and then Part three, explain how you will simulate one complete trial. So I have to go until I pass the test, right? And then clearly state what we will be counting. So for that, I said, we're gonna count the number of tests taken in this trial. And then we're gonna run several trials. So let's do that. So we will go to math, rand, I'm gonna use the calculator instead of a random number table. In this case, I will go randant, one comma 100, <clears throat> hit enter. Okay, so that represents failed because on the first test, only 34% passed. So he has to retake the test. And this is a fail again, because this is less than 74. And fail again, oh, no, ooh, I messed up. So this one was failed, but this one was pass. Okay, so that was our first trial, it took two times. This one would be a new trial, and hey, the person passed on the first test. So that time it only took one. Hit enter again, and this time, uh, third trial did not pass on the first attempt, uh, did pass on the second attempt. So we've got two, one, two. Try again, passed on the first test this time. So two, one, two, one. And this time failed on the first, failed on the second, Failed on the third, whoa, this person needs to study. Failed on the fourth, and then finally passed on the fifth. Okay, so we had two, one, two, one, five as our outcomes. Uh, that was about five trials. And then we would want to analyze the outcomes of your several trials, so we might want to find the average. So two plus one plus two plus one plus five divided by one, two, three, four, five trials. So we got an average of 2.2 um, <clears throat> for how many times someone would have to take the test on average. And we can state our conclusion um, based on our simulation. It takes an average of 2.2 attempts to pass the driving test. Um, and so someone might, you know, want to store enough money to take it three times if they're going to be average uh, because it can't really take it 0.2 of a time. And so that concludes our review of chapter 11.